Welcome to the RN to Writer show, where we teach nurses and other healthcare professionals how to become freelance writers. I'm your host, Elizabeth Haynes, and I'm a nurse, but I made my living, and a very good living if I do say so myself, as a freelance writer. And today, I coach other nurses and all kinds of health professionals how to become freelance writers too. Hey, before I get started, please know that any resources I mentioned today, you can find in the show notes or in the description box on YouTube. Let's dive in. Today, I want to talk to you about the only four things you really need to do as a freelance writer to find success, get paid, grow your business to the level that you want. Yep, there's only four things, and I'm going to cover them in this video today. Those four things are, number one, setting your business or office hours and honoring them. Number two, tracking your time. Number three, analyzing the data of your business at a predetermined time. And number four, doing mindset work consistently because I cannot emphasize to you how much mindset plays a role in your success as a freelance writer. Now, if that sounds simplistic, I want to say, yes, it really is that simple. (laughs) This is what I did throughout my career, became a six-figure writer. This is what we teach in our program, Get Paid Well to Write though not quite as explicitly as I'm laying it out today. And I assure you, and I want you to assure yourself, if you do these four things consistently, your success is assured. Your success is coming, and you need to believe in that as long as you work this process. So let's dive in to the finer points of the process. Okay, the first point in the process that you need to do consistently is set the hour or hours that you are committing to work on your business every week and then honor those hours. Remember I said the theme here is doing things consistently. And that means scheduling yourself to work on your business. Let's look at it this way. If you were starting a different kind of business, If you were going to uh, open a senior care franchise or um, do injectables, do fillers and things like that, you wouldn't just schedule time in and around everything else that you do or work when you felt like it. You would have a bona fide business with an office and potentially a brick and mortar building where you would go to work every day or every weekend or whatever you determined you needed to do to make that business succeed. It is no different as a freelance writer, even though we work from home. So what you should do first is decide how much time feels comfortable to invest in your writing business every week And then carve out that time in your schedule for a consistent appearance in your office. Here's what I'm talking about. Let's say you feel like your life is super busy right now, and we all know that success as a freelance writer does not necessarily depend on how much time and effort you put in. It's not about how hard you work. It's about working consistently. Maybe an hour a week feels comfortable for you right now. Well, that's fantastic. Then commit to putting in an hour a week on your business and also carve out a specific time that you're going to spend that hour in your home office. So maybe that's on a Saturday morning at 6 a.m. before anybody else in the household is up. Maybe that's on a Tuesday at 8 p.m. after the kids are in bed and the dog is walked and all of that jazz. It doesn't matter when it is. The point is to set the hour or the hours and be in your office consistently during that time frame. You will be surprised at the magic that will occur even if when you're in the office you feel like you're not getting that much stuff done. 
We're not going to worry about what gets done necessarily in the office. It's the act of getting in the office consistently. And that leads me to point number two. The second thing you need to do consistently is when you're in the office, you need to track your time. I'm not talking about turning on a timer to measure, yes, I did get my 60 minutes in or my two hours or my four hours in. I'm talking about downloading a time tracking app like Toggle and setting it up with projects or activities and tracking how much time you're devoting to each of those activities. This takes some practice. And I don't want you to beat yourself up if you forget to turn the timer on. Just turn it on when you remember. In fact, the whole point of this exercise is not to punish yourself. It's not to use this against yourself or judge yourself. The point of tracking your time is to gather data because you cannot make sensible business decisions without data, and the, how you spend your time in the office is one of the most crucial data points you will have in your business. Collecting that data allows you to eventually move to step number three, which I'll get to in a moment, and analyze the data so that you can see what is working and what is not working in a dispassionate manner. That's because our brains want to Analyze in the moment. I sent a letter of introduction and it did not get an immediate response. Therefore, this approach is garbage and I'm throwing it out. That is not the way we make decisions. And as a nurse, you know that we don't make decisions like that in clinical practice. We look at trends, right? You need to do the same in your business, but you can't do that if you don't collect the data. So, number one step get in your office on a consistent basis once a week. Number two step, when you're in your office, track your time, how you're spending it. And that leads me to point number three, which is at a predetermined time, analyze your data. I'm going to suggest that you make it a point to look at your data initially once a month. The first of the month, you can use these time tracking apps to slice and dice your data into all kinds of beautiful visuals. So go ahead and do that in ways that are meaningful to you. How much time did you spend on administrative things like invoicing? How much time did you spend on marketing? How much time did you spend on writing assignments? The information that you glean from this data, as I said before, is crucial in making good business decisions. If you see that it's taking you three hours to write a blog post, for example, for a client, this gives you valuable information about how to price those. If you see that you spent four hours working up a query for a health article and you shotgunned it out to 10 potential publications and nobody bit on it, this maybe says, I need to continue sending this out elsewhere, or maybe I should review this query and see if I can tighten it up and make it even better and resubmit it somewhere. Again, when you analyze the data, though, do not use it against yourself. Do not use it to beat yourself up because it's just numbers. It's just information that you can use to make smart decisions about small tweaks to your business that will continue to drive you towards your goal. Okay, let's talk about the fourth thing you need to do to find success as a freelance writer. The first three things I have talked about were, you could say, hard skills. In other words, they are practical things that you can do, you can write them down. This fourth one is a little bit of a softer skill. The fourth thing you need to do consistently is mindset work. Now, this does not have to be complicated. It does not have to be painful. I'm not talking about looking back into your past and dredging up childhood trauma and trying to figure out if that's what's blocking you from sending letters of introduction. <laughs> that's not at all what I'm talking about. When I say mindset work to improve your freelancing and get you where you want to go, I'm talking about this. 
noticing that you have thoughts and observing how those thoughts make you feel. That is it. So when you're analyzing that data and you're thinking, I sent 20 LOIs and it got me no responses, recognize that that's a thought. I sent 20 LOIs and I got no responses is a thought. That thought, though, drives a feeling inside you. And I'm going to guess that maybe that feeling is frustration. I put all this work in, I sent 20 LOIs, I got no responses, this is very frustrating. If a thought creates an unpleasant feeling like frustration, you can label it unhelpful. That's the third part of this process. Notice your thoughts, observe the feeling that they create, and label that thought as helpful or unhelpful based on the feeling. If you think a thought that makes you feel good, that's a helpful feeling. Now here's the magic of this. You don't need to do anything more than this. If you tell your brain that a thought is unhelpful, eventually your brain will stop serving you that thought automatically. Because your brain is trying to be efficient, so it serves you these thoughts without much thought. It's an automatic thought that it serves to you. And when you label it as unhelpful, eventually your brain will offer you other thoughts. Some of those will still be unhelpful thoughts, like this is not a panacea. Some of those will still be unhelpful thoughts. And your goal is simply to notice those, observe the feelings, and label them. If you do this consistently, eventually your brain will start giving you more helpful thoughts. Those helpful thoughts, because of the process of cognition, those helpful thoughts are going to drive positive feelings that are going to drive productive actions that get you to a happy result that you want. So that's it for today. I just want to recap what we've talked about. If you, as an up-and-coming freelancer, do these four things consistently, you are going to find success. The four things are set aside time that you're going to work on your business every week and honor those business hours. Number two, when you're in the office, track your time for data gathering purposes. Number three, at a predetermined time, gather and analyze the data you collected. And number four, do mindset work consistently. These are the four factors that are going to walk you more quickly to success and sustain your success once you get there. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the RN to Writer Show. Once again, I'm your host, Elizabeth Haynes. I'm a nurse, but I became a six-figure freelancer, and I love coaching all of you on how to do that, too. You can follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, as well as on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, no matter where you're listening. And you can find links to any of the resources I mentioned today in the show notes or the description box. Until next time, keep pitching.